thanks for being here at our Chicago Fall Tech Expo. So joining me here today, I'm excited to introduce John Mark from Ingenue. And we have a few more lenses at the booth with Ingenue, but in front of us here, we're excited to show the 44 to that's right, 44 to 440 anamorphic zoom, which is what the newest anamorphic zoom in the line, right? So this makes the third anamorphic zoom. You have a wide anamorphic zoom and a standard anamorphic zoom. And now here we have a very, you know, obviously long range and a fairly lightweight uh, lens for the range. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the lens? I also know we can change the back element from spherical to anamorphic. So maybe tell me a little bit more about the design and the, you know, the perspective of this lens. Does it work? Yeah. You're live now. <laughs> That was uh, I was just mentioning that uh, we came uh, three years ago with a project of building anamorphic zoom. Um, the first one was a 56 to 152 that was based on the 28 to 76 short zoom, and we came uh, a year after with a 30 to 72 based on a 15 to 40. So the, the response was very positive. People really like the lens, really like the quality, the performance of these two lenses. But we were also looking to, you know, going a little bit longer in terms of focal length in terms of range. So we look at, you know, what was possible to do in terms of long range. And we came with that lens, a 10 time zoom. The 10 time zoom in anamorphic has been around for uh, over 50 years when, uh, you know, Panavision uh, modified in the 1960s the first uh, 25 to 250 engineer to 50 to 500. So it has been a really popular lens in the film production for a long time. So the concept of that lens is a little bit different than what people have done in the past. Instead of having an adapter in the back of a lens, we integrated the cylinders inside of a rear group. So by doing that, we were able to play with the aberration uh, in order to create a very clean image, flat image, even at full open. So that lens, uh, can be used even at T4.5, it's uh, pretty fast for anamorphic uh, and um, really without any compromise in terms of quality performances, aberration, uh, distortion. So I'm glad you brought up a little bit of a history because I was thinking about that with anamorphic, right? Anamorphic's been around, like you mentioned, since the 60s. So what makes it different now, like with this lens being new, what are the mechanics maybe that are either out there that you can use or that you have to incorporate for newer digital cameras? Does it make it different or is it the same? Well, uh, it's the same, but the technology change every, uh, you know, every year and uh, what we have done in that lens in particular, in that lens, we use a uh, design of a 25 to 250 Optimo that has been around for three years right now. So the, the lens is really a very strong lens, very well built mechanically, uh, has a very minimum breathing, so that's very important when you shoot, uh, you know, just, uh, a big production uh, and also we are just uh, by using the cylinder in the back of a lens we were able to really create a very unique image uh, so uh, a lot of people have been shooting anamorphic in the past years and with you know prime and zoom but what was missing was the long long focal lens above 200 millimeter it's very difficult to make a, a good anamorphic uh, uh, lens so that lens really just uh, close the gap. You can really shoot from 440 to uh, 44 with only one lens. And even we can also use a 1.4 and two time extender. We did the test. Uh, the first test was in California with autonomous. We put a two time extender in the back, went all the way in the projection room to 20 feet and look at the quality of image. And everybody was stunning, like, you know, the lens was sharp, the lens was usable even at 880 millimeters. So it's really, you know, you can go from 44 to 880 and even wider with a short zoom. Um, so you can cover basically all you need in anamorphic. I was just going to ask you about the look. So you mentioned the look of anamorphic. When you're designing a lens, how do you balance the mechanics of anamorphic and still creating that creamy look without too much uh, bokeh and so on? Well, the look is... Um, is very different from a spherical lens. Even if it's based on a spherical lens, 
by adding this cylinder in the back, you really uh, just play with the aberration in order to really little bit cut the contrast. So a lot of people are looking about cinematic look and uh, using the anamorphic series of engineer, you really create an, uh, another level of uh, compromise in terms of contrast, sharpness, but really uh, appealing to, to, uh, to, the, to the DP. So it's really uh, bringing uh, just something that not too extreme in terms of, because uh, we have, there is some people who have been using very extreme anamorphic, uh, whatever, bokeh or, or even uh, sharpness. We, we are not at that level. We are not bringing, you know, just flare, uh, drop of quality in the edges. The, the lens is very flat, but in average, it's really uh, less contrasty than a spherical lens. And that might be also I was thinking about with all the new digital sensors, obviously, with getting larger and larger, 6K, 8K. So this adds that kind of creamy, organic look. Yeah, for sure. I know also you have the possibility of shooting, you know, full uh, resolution in, in with the Alexa. So you also add a little bit more resolution in terms of, you know, image size. So people who are doing visual effect, they always want the additional resolution. So that lens really bring you, you know, the additional re resolution you may need for some of this uh, kind of application. Now, obviously, one of the most uh, important things that we need to mention is the anamorphic to spherical change that can happen. So why don't we talk about that? Because that's obviously very unique about this lens. Yeah, so when we released the first two anamorphic zoom, the 56 to 52 and, uh, and the 30 to 72, uh, people were asking us, can we just get two lenses in one? Of course, these lenses were not designed from the beginning to be anamorphic. So we had to really play with the optical design in order to make them as good as possible. But we couldn't really do the back and forth between spherical and anamorphic. When we designed the 25 to 250 uh, three years ago, we had in mind to do an anamorphic version. And uh, we really played with optical design in order to be able to convert from anamorphic to, digit to, uh, to spherical very easily. So uh, this idea, we really just took it in, uh, into the 10 times zoom. So being able to change the entire rear group from anamorphic to, to spherical. So basically for a rental house, that's not super busy in anamorphic all the time. We can buy the lens as a 40 photo for 40 and uh, add for an additional $10,000 uh, average, uh, like a spherical kit so they can convert the lens in-house. It's pretty easy, it takes uh, less than half an hour to do the conversion. We can convert the lens to a 25 to 250 and uh, back and forth. So it's really a big plus for optimizing your rental. I was just gonna say, I think that's a really amazing element because obviously that lengthens the life of a lens that you, Ingenue already is known for. I was just talking to someone the other day about uh, the 24 to 90 and how long that's been around, uh, the spherical zoom, and how long those lenses have lasted. Yeah, for sure. I, I, you know, everybody knows that the camera is almost obsolete in two to three years. Uh, maybe even not the case for all the camera, but most of the camera is, is like that. Uh, you know, the life of a lens is much longer, and especially, you know, high-end quality glass. We have a we really the 24 to 90 has been around for 15 years, and it's still like the number one lens in the world for you know, uh, as a zoom. Uh, as they say, some, right now, like some people are using 25 to 250 that were built in the 1960s, 1970s to shoot their movie. I think uh, when you buy an engineer lens, you really use it for at least a full generation. And uh, it's, it's still the case for the 10 to 1 uh, anamorphic. Now let's talk just a couple of specs about the lens so everyone knows. So it's a T4.5 when it's in anamorphic. Right. Mm -hmm. And also I wanted to mention the front diameter is 136 millimeter, yeah. which is fairly mm -hmm. small for yeah. the size and range of that lens. Very standard. And then when you switch it to the spherical 25-250, the T-stop, how does the T-stop change? It's the T3.5. Okay, so still yeah. very yeah, fast. Yeah, but full range. You don't lose, uh, you don't change. have ramping. Right. Yeah, it doesn't nice. change. So let's talk a little bit about what else you have here at the, the show. So I know you have well, an Optimo style zoom. Yeah, well. we have an Optimo style. We have a 16 to 40 uh, on a booth. So that's really the, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, what can I say, like uh, entry level in terms of, uh, you know, optical quality in the Optimo line. Uh, and we also have uh, the new easy uh, lens. We have a 30 to 90 here, but a lens we just introduced a month ago at IBC. 
uh, it's a new uh, new concept for engineer. Uh, instead of you know targeting the high end uh, just market, we wanted to introduce a lens that was affordable. It's uh, in the ten thousand uh, dollar range, and uh, that can really um, you know just help the young cinematographer, the people who own their own camera, to really use. Uh, high quality glass built by Ingenieur. And also with that series, the user can change it between EFPL and, and E mount themselves very Yeah, very yeah, you have, yeah. So you have a free uh, mount option. You have PL, EF, and E mount. Right. Correct. And, and you know what? The last thing I want to ask you actually about this anamorphic zoom is how it handles rack focus, because you and I were talking about that earlier. Well, yeah, it's, it has really the characteristic in terms of breathing as a regular Optimo. Animal. So it really, you, you can change the focus, very minimal breathing, and that's really important for a zoom because, right. yeah, most of the anamorphic zoom have really strong uh, breathing, breathing. When, you, when you change the focus. So it's very important to uh, have that characteristic on, uh, on the 40 40, right. 40. And this lens is shipping now, it's available now, correct? Yeah, we shipped the first one in July. Uh, so okay. it has been uh, probably, we are around 10 units worldwide. Uh, I think you have a seven year in the US in uh, several rental uh, facility around the US, New York uh, and LA mostly. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, nice. it's available for rental. Nice. And the last thing I want to ask you is what's your favorite Ingenue Zoom out of your lineup? What well, I, like? I'm not a DP, so I can't really tell you. Well, <laughs> in terms of, uh, you, you know, the, the, you know the, the one people really uh, pray that a great lens is the 45 to 120, right. uh, which we developed uh, in 2011. We really learn a lot from, you know, the other lenses we built before, and we really put the right uh, just level of performance in uh, in that lens. But I know people, some people you like the 15 to 40 was the first choice to zoom uh, on that category uh, because it's a little bit more organic than the 45 to 120. Right. But uh, yeah. I like the 45 to 120. Yeah, so and it's that. easy to maintain. <laughs> That's <laughs> one of the things I, I know to do. So right. I prefer maintaining a 45 to 120 than a 15 to 40, <laughs> which is a little bit more right. comfortable. Well, thank you so much, John Mark. Everyone, make sure you go see thank John you. Mark at his booth. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Stay tuned.